Hi everybody and welcome back to the workbench. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can make your own uh, field charging battery packs. So what I mean by that is um, how you can go about creating those easy portable packs to bring with you um, to the field so that you can charge in the field. Um, now I live in a country where it's kind of difficult to get lithium ion cells shipped. Um, you can't, and you can't just go to the store and buy, you know, 18650s or whatever. So um, what, do you, what you have to do is you have to be a little bit inventive. Now, uh, access to different cells is actually a little bit easier. Um, and the cell I'm specifically thinking about is this. This is an IKEA battery, uh, believe it or not. Uh, so what this is, it's an NIMH or a nickel metal hydride battery. Um, it comes in a double A form factor. Uh, it's 2450 milliampere hours at 1.2 volts, uh, nominal voltage. Um, and you'll get a four pack of these, uh, in my home country of Iceland, you'll get a four pack of these for about $10. In the US you can get them for about seven. So uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna get a pack uh, I'm gonna get a few packs of these. I'm gonna get about 20 cells and I'm gonna turn that into a nice little field charging pack. It should be able to give me, um, if my calculations are correct, should be able to charge um, charge four cell batteries at about seven amps um, and uh, should be good for charging maybe three to four packs in the field. So it'll give me, so it'll extend the life of your of your uh, lipo packs when you're out flying in the field a bit. So uh, with that all said, uh, let's get to building. Here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get ourselves all set up. Uh, the way we're going to be connecting them is uh, we want to have an output of 12 volts. Now, as you can see, each individual cell has an output of, uh, they're reading 1.32. Uh, the nominal voltage is at 12, uh, 1.2 volts per cell. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start by making parallel connections, pairing up uh, two batteries together. Uh, what that will do is that uh, for, for each pack connect, that will mean the voltage stays the same at 1.2 volts, but the capacity will increase from 2450 milliampere hours up to 4900 milliampere hours. Now, I just want to make a quick note on soldering to batteries. Um, don't do it at home. Um, these batteries are not made for soldering for. You can get batteries that are meant for soldering on, but uh, general advice is when it comes to any rechargeable battery, uh, nickel metal hydride batteries are not excluded. Uh, don't solder directly to them. So um, I just want to get that out there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, start making the connections, uh, connecting uh, each two batteries in, in parallel. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. Uh, it's possible to use something just like, uh, uh, like the, the, there are special tabs that are made for connecting batteries together like this. But uh, I have a pretty basic workstation. I mean, I don't have anything like that laying around, so I just use a piece of short wire. Uh, and there we go. Now we're just gonna keep doing that for all of our packs. And then they're gonna be all connected up, all the positive terminals and all the negative terminals. So now what we have is we have 10 uh, packs of two batteries. Um, they're all still at 1.2 volts, but the capacity for each of those interconnected packs is 4.9 ampere hours. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to line them up and tape them together. Uh, and we've got to make sure that the order of them is uh, positive up, negative up, positive up, negative up, and so on. So that we can go ahead and make our serial connections. Uh, here I am just putting on uh, the positive battery lead, which will uh, go to the connector later. And uh, then we're gonna start to make the serial connections now. Uh, so we connect the negative terminal of the first battery to the positive terminal of the next battery, just like so. 
and it doesn't matter um, which battery you, you connect to in the pack of two uh, because they are interconnected and acting basically as one large cell. Uh, and after that we keep going, we just uh, we connect the negative terminal of each battery to the positive terminal of the next one. That's how we make a serial connection. Uh, and we just have to go through this entire pack, connecting the negative to the positive. Once we've done that, we can take the two packs and tape them together. And we're going to keep our serial connection going on to the second pack. So we're just going to go ahead and tape them together here. There we go. And as you can see there, we're connecting the negative terminal of the bottom battery in the first row to the positive terminal of the first battery in the second row. And then at the end, um, you'll reach the uh, last battery and then you should have a negative terminal facing upwards adjacent to the positive terminal where you put on the first battery lead. So just go ahead and connect uh, uh, the uh, negative terminal there. Now if we just do a quick voltage check here of the total pack, we should be getting a, a voltage that's about 10 times the nominal voltage of a single cell, so about 12 volts, which is what we were getting there. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and put on a connector. I'm using an XT60 because that's sort of the industry standard in the FPV RC hobby. And of course, uh, before you solder on a connector, remember to put some heat shrink on the battery lead so you can uh, shrink it, uh, shrink it up later uh, to prevent any shorts. We'll connect both the uh, positive and the negative negative terminal there. there uh, it's best the best tool for uh, heating heat shrink is a heat gun the second best tool is a lighter and the worst tool is a soldering iron but that's all I had this time so I ask you to please forgive me uh, in order to make the heat shrink stick a little bit because it is a bit large uh, I put some electrical tape under you can do that and now once we're done I'm just gonna package everything up with duct tape and we'll get the packaging a little bit better later. Just do one final check on the output voltage, and there we go. That is our total package. Now, um, you can charge this using uh, uh, any sort of NIMH charger. Uh, the ISDT charger does that. So I'm just gonna set it to charge here, NIMH. And the negative delta V detection I have at five millivolts. And I'm charging it at 2.5 amperes, which is equates to half a C charge. That's what uh, generally I think is safe for these sort of uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. Once the pack is charged, we can go ahead and connect it directly to our charger, and then we can run our charger off that. We can charge our lipos in the field as such. As I said earlier, this should be good for up to a 7 amp charge, charging a 4 cell battery. Well that's going to be it for this time guys, thanks for tuning in, uh, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll catch you next time.